Uh, I'm sure he's going to provide a stimulating and challenging presentation. Uh, Matt Brack. Thanks, Andrew. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm very much uh, grateful for the opportunity to speak, and hopefully this is a, a chance for those within the, the service and the wider sector to have a debate around some of the challenges we face uh, in, in, uh, in these difficult times. But we certainly don't think that everything in Ken's uh, report, for example, is wrong. We uh, agree with the idea of a proper independent inspectorate of the Fire and Rescue Service. We agree that uh, privatisation of the service uh, is wrong. But I have to be candid uh, that we also think the report is flawed in, in a number of respects. Uh, and I think our view is that if, uh, and we, we take account of, of the report's uh, suggestion that you're making recommendations, it's ask, asking people to think about options, but uh, if a number of those options were taken up, in our view, the future of the Fire and Rescue Service in uh, England would be a bleak one. Uh, and if the changes and uh, reforms, and I'm very fussy about the use of the word reforms, which uh, normally traditionally meant improving things, and uh, I'm very uh, concerned when it's used to uh, justify things which in our view are not improving things, but taking them backwards, uh, but uh, if some of those changes uh, were to proceed, in our view, it would further fragment the fire and rescue service to the detriment of the public and ultimately, in our view, would cost uh, lives. The role of our members uh, out there fitting smoke alarms, discussing and engaging with communities and particularly with vulnerable people have assisted uh, in preventing fires from taking place uh, in, in, uh, in, in our communities. But we would reject the basic uh, market-orientated argument that somehow the demand for the fire service has fallen and therefore you should cut the service because in our view the service should be about risk rather than demand. And if we can take an example from elsewhere in public life, uh, clearly there are preventative uh, activities and work that people can do to uh, uh, reduce the threat of heart attacks. But if somebody nevertheless has a heart attack, it doesn't justify that they should have to wait longer for a paramedic or ambulance to come and deal with that incident. I think exactly the same logic applies in relation to fire. One of the difficulties in the fire service is that the government, having completely washed its hands of much of the fire rescue service, has also washed its hands largely of research about the fire rescue service. So if we want to look at what the cost of fire is, you will struggle to find it. So unfortunately, because central government has taken a step back and said it's down to the sector, well, the sector hasn't currently stepped in. We uh, are engaged with others in the Fire Sector Federation in work around updating uh, work on the cost of fire and looking at a, a more uh, wide-ranging study in relation to that. But I have to say, that is a failing that that work is not currently up to date because if you think about it, how can we properly, properly assess the impact of reductions in the numbers of firefighters and reductions in the number of fire stations and reductions in the number of fire engines if nobody's measuring the cost of fire? To me, it makes no sense at all. It's not good policy. It's not good public policy. And I think it's something the fire and rescue service and the wider sector should be jumping up and down about. And the truth is that in relation to floods, there are now 5,000 fewer firefighters available across England to tackle major floodings compared with what were available in 2007 when the issue of floods became part of the national debate part of the uh, national debate within the Fire and Rescue Service. On the other hand, another part of government, DEFRA, says that flood risk will increase with climate change in coming years. Uh, we've seen the impact of flooding with our own eyes. We believe that the uh, Fire and Rescue Service needs to plan adequately for those sorts of uh, incidents and provide the resources to do it. And we have argued consistently throughout that period since 2007 that central government has a role to play on that issue, for example, by setting out clearly through the Fire and Rescue Services Act that uh, the, the Fire and Rescue Services should plan and respond to incidents of major flooding. If you look at the recent floods, 
At one point in Somerset, we had 20 fire and rescue services providing mutual aid support to Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue Service. And if you take account the changeover, it's something like a thousand people. Interesting challenge, isn't that? How many other local authority services contact members of staff and say, we want you to travel halfway across the country, we're not telling you how long you're going to be away for, when you're going to be back? Not many. So the Fire and Rescue Service is pretty unique in that regard. And to us, it makes no sense at all, and I don't see how anyone can possibly argue the case, but I look forward to hearing it, that people working alongside each other at the same incident should be on different pay, terms and conditions. That to us makes no sense. We believe the Fire and Rescue Service needs investment, not cuts. We, need to, needs to be, we think it needs to be resourced to manage that growing and new range of risks, rescues, interventions, as well as preventative work uh, and new areas of preventative work as well. We believe the Fire and Rescue Service should have consistent, universal and professional standards at its core and should train and prepare a highly skilled professional workforce to deal with all of those issues that I've uh, mentioned. Hopefully you will read our contributions when they're published. Uh, my point in closing is that we want to be part of providing a world-class fire and rescue service to the communities we serve. We don't believe, and we make no apologies, we don't believe you can do that by endlessly cutting the service and on the back of austerity measures. Uh, and I would say to fire, uh, fire service politicians, at local, but particularly at national level, that firefighters are proud to do the work that they do. They're proud to be out there, uh, away from home if necessary, dealing with fires, floods, or whatever else it may be. But I think we have the right in return to ask the best possible equipment, training, and resources to do that job. Uh, and as I often say, if people give us the tools and resources, then we are proud to do that job. Thank you.